<laughs> Hello, one neuro hussy here, taking a morning soak in a hot spring mm, somewhere in the Sierra Nevada mountains. This is one of my favorite hot springs because the hot water comes cascading down this crazy mineral formation into this really nice gravel bottomed pool. A little cave back there behind the waterfall. You can go in the cave if you want. But I'm posted up here, <laughs> looking out at the other side of the pool, which faces this amazingly beautiful creek. And that creek is great for taking cold plunges. <laughs> I'm about to get in there and submerge myself in the ice cold snow melt. This is snow melt coming down from Yosemite. And then I get back in the hot pool, warm up, and oh my God, what a feeling. Oh my God, that was so cold. But, oh my God, this feels so amazing now. Anyway, I'm here with my friend Terry and he just let his dog in the hot spring, which I thought was really gross and unsanitary. I'm not sure how you guys feel about that. I've seen a lot of people put their dogs in hot springs. I'm not a fan, but maybe I'm just overly squeamish. He said it was okay because the water's flowing that way and it's carrying the dog hair downstream, which is true. So as long as this dog doesn't come shake on me, <laughs> I'll be okay. <laughs> anyway, it's much too beautiful morning to complain about stuff like that. I'm just gonna enjoy this morning soak in this hot spring because guess what? It's my last morning here. <laughs> I've been camped here for mm, six days now, seven days. Six days? Yeah. Anyway, five, six days. It's been really beautiful, but unfortunately, today it's time for me to leave. Oh, it was so hard to leave that hot spring, especially because I just had to wade across that freezing cold creek. Well, I didn't have to, but I wanted to because I wanted to come over here to the other uh, bank of the river and show you something. Okay, so there's the hot spring I was just soaking in. And there's that big mineral formation that I was kind of hunkered under in the cave back over there. But apparently this whole formation and maybe this whole hot spring is in jeopardy because look what happened over here. This entire piece of the formation came kind of like sheared off and there's that huge crack in it and it looks like the whole thing is gonna fall into the creek. Yikes. Uh, we were talking to a lady from, well, she said she was with the Forest Service. Uh, she was saying that it's, the whole thing is so structurally unsound. Supposedly they're going to come in and dynamite this part here uh, with some kind of special dynamite that will just pulverize it so that it doesn't just chunk off and block the creek. It'll just become powder and, I guess, wash downstream. Uh, I'm not sure. She said that this whole formation was in jeopardy. <laughs> you know, the whole thing might come crashing down one day. It's cool from this vantage point, you can see up top where the hot water is coming out the source there, flowing down the side, making that beautiful waterfall. All right, well, anyway, I gotta walk back to my camp, so no more hot spring for me. Today's the day I gotta pack up and roll on. Fortunately, the sting of leaving the hot spring is lessened somewhat by this beautiful forest path. I have to walk down to get back to my campsite. The only minor downside is I do need to cross back to the other side of the creek and well, <laughs> the only way to get over there is, well, it's a little on the sketchy side. Yikes, I would not want to fall into that cold river right now, especially not holding my camera. Terra firma, we made it. Oh my God, but look how beautiful this is. I feel like I'm in freaking a Disney movie. Oh, I never want to leave this place. I come here every summer. I usually come around Labor Day, so it's like my last fling of the summer. Well, this year I came a little bit earlier uh, and it still has that bittersweet, don't want to leave, it's so beautiful. Can I just stay here forever? Never, never land kind of vibe. Okay, we got one more stream crossing here. We're kind of on an island. You can see the roots of that tree. It's really cool. 
Got to cross this big boy. And that's the path I want to be on up there. So, here we go. Whew. Had to take my flip flops off halfway across because, man, they were slippery and I did not want to fall into that waterfall and crack my school open on them rocks. All right, we made it. Now I just gotta go back to camp, finish packing up and roll out of here. But it's not all bad because I'm actually not headed straight home. I'm gonna go check out a couple interesting sites someone tipped me off to that are sort of in the area, kind of along my route back to Vegas. Oh, sure is hazy out here. It's wildfire smoke. There's a huge wildfire burning. Well, there's a bunch of huge wildfires burning, but there's a really, really huge wildfire burning all the way up in Oregon. And I think this is the smoke all the way from that. I knew I should have stayed at the hot spring, but that's okay. I think this thing I'm going to check out will be worth it. Had to make a pit stop at the mono cone. <laughs> it's lunchtime after all. <laughs> now, actually, I only got the shake at the mono cone. Uh, my lunch, which is a California burrito, I got up in Bridgeport at this place called the Burger Barn. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I just get my lunch and my shake at the same place? Well, <laughs> it's complicated, like everything in my life. Well, I was staying up closer to Bridgeport when I left this morning and I really like the food at the Burger Barn. And to be honest, I really don't like the service at the Mono Cone. And that's all based on this one bad experience I had. In 2018, I was driving down this way, towing my trailer on my way back from Burning Man, the Burning Man Festival. And well, long story, I stopped to get a shake at the Mono Cone. And I was standing in front of, you know, they have those sliding windows like at a walk-up burger joint. And I was standing there trying to figure out which flavor of shake I wanted. And the lady that was working in there, I guess it was five o'clock or six o'clock, just slammed it in my face, locked it and flipped the sign over, closed. Like without saying, uh, do you wanna order something? We're about to close or, hey, uh, we're closing now. So if you need to order something. No, there was no warning at all. She saw me standing there thinking, she just closed it in my face. So ever since then, and yes, I do hold a grudge. And that was three years ago. I have a real <laughs> beef with the mono cone. So you're probably wondering, why would I even get a shake at the Motocone? <laughs> well, like I said, I got my food at the Burger Barn in Bridgeport oh, like two, three hours ago. And so the shake would have melted in time for my lunch if I would have got it then. So I had to go against my principles and get this dang shake at the Motocone anyways. <sighs> it's pretty good. Grumpy staffer, no. And besides all of that, I just love the food at the uh, Burger Barn so much more. I'm serious. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the Burger Barn in Bridgeport. If you're in Bridgeport or even traveling by, go check them out. They're super nice family-run business. The lady there is very friendly, and she's never closed the window in my face. <laughs> that was delicious, and I'm stuffed. But... Now it's time for adventure. Okay, Google says we're here. And by here, I mean, well, the middle of nowhere, Pine Forest. Oh, actually one of my viewers sent me this tip, said he was riding around in the forest with his friend and they stumbled on some strange statues. <laughs> okay, I'm probably the only person who would drive out of my way to go look for some strange statues in the forest, but mm, sounds interesting and I'm in the area, so why not? Anytime somebody sends me a hot tip for something to check out, <laughs> I pin it on a Google map. I have this saved Google map with all the places people have told me about, all the places I wanna go check out, pinned. And oh my God, when I look at my map, it's covered in pins. So here I am, ready to check off another pin. 
whether it's worth it or not. Well, I'll tell you one thing that's cool about this place is there's a ton of obsidian all over the ground. Look at that. You know, obsidian is like that shiny black rock that is really sharp. Like, I don't know, it flakes off into pieces that have really sharp edges. And the Indians, the Native Americans, used to use them to make arrowheads. And there's a ton of it all over the ground here. But I didn't come here to find obsidian. I didn't even come here to look for arrowheads. I'm here to look for these weird statues. Okay, wait, I think maybe I found one of these weird statues he was talking about. <laughs> okay, wow, what is it that I have driven all these miles out of my way to investigate? Oh, I guess it's a, it looks like it's a monument to somebody who passed away, I'm guessing. Because, uh, well, the sun is kind of challenging, but if you look at it, it says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And then it says Glenn Hawley at the bottom. So I'm guessing maybe somebody named Glenn Hawley died and he liked to hike. Cause look, they built this thing with boot prints. And look, what does that say? Tommy. Oh gosh, the light's really bad. You guys probably can't read it. It looks like it says Tommy on the bottom. So maybe somebody named Tommy made this monument for Glenn Hawley. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh if somebody who passed away that's sad but it's cool that Glenn had a good enough friend that went through all the trouble to come way out here in the middle of nowhere forest and make this monument for him let me see what it's made of oh it's these are stone it's all stone oh I thought it was gonna be resin or something it's like it was Wolverine brand boots I wonder if those are the actual hiking boots that he used to wear and then like they piled up a bunch of obsidian all around the base of it just like i was talking about okay well that was pretty cool uh i am the kind of a person just fyi who considers driving 40 miles out of my way for something like this worth it because that's pretty cool and now you know now i gotta wonder about who glenn holly was but i also have to wonder about these other statues the person who sent me the location said there was statues plural and well there is a trail I don't know if you can see, but there's a trail leading from this statue up the hill. So, well, maybe it leads to some more statues. Okay, wow. <laughs> there are some more statues here, and these are actual real statues. <laughs> that last thing was more of a monument. This is a, well, two statues. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, if this was just like in a town park somewhere, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But this is out here in like, I think we're in the Inyo National Forest, like way out there, way away from anything. So it's very unexpected to see this. And gosh, it makes, makes me wonder a lot about who put these up and who they're supposed to be. Okay, well, just looking at them, it's, I mean, it looks like it's probably a husband and wife. They look like they're probably early pioneers. You know, like U.S. Western pioneers, because the woman's wearing kind of an old-fashioned dress, long dress. She's holding a baby. She's got a little boy hugging her leg. Then the guy's holding a chicken, a rooster. Oh, can't tell. So I guess they were farmers. Uh, there's a few little things that have been left here by people. Uh, some Coors Light cans. I don't know if that means he was a Coors drinker. Maybe she was a Coors drinker. Maybe they both were Coors drinkers. But yeah, look at that. There's a, a brand new full unopened tall can. And then one of those aluminum bottles too. And then there's a real old can. I don't know if that has anything to do with this or somebody just found it nearby. And then there's this. Oh my gosh, what is Cousins Day 2019. Oh, maybe they had like a family reunion and they did pottery or something for fun. I mean, Cousins Day. Mm hmm. It's cool. Maybe there was a flower in it at one time, you know, like a little vase. Let's see what else. Somebody left a little painted rock. Just colorful flowers and stuff painted on it. Uh -huh, a little homemade clay bowl. Some little homemade clay, I don't know what you'd call these tiles. 
Welcome is a lighthouse. Oh, this is cool. It's like a flower sort of, I guess. What does this say? Jerry and Lori. I wonder, is that... I don't know, does that look... That could be a Jerry. Could that really be a Lori, though? Lori's a modern name. Or at least it is to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, and then look here. This one says Fulton. 7-16. So does that mean July 16th? Or July of 2016? A little clay megaphone? What could this all mean? So confusing. And then more obsidian piled up all around the base. Ox. Oh, look, it's like a seashell. It says ox with a heart. Or O-X, maybe. We love you. O and M. And then look at the around the base of the woman's dress. It's like a house. And it's like another little house. So it's almost like the base of her dress is like a little village in the forest or something. It's, I don't know if you can see that. It looks like there's trees and rocks cut into it. And then the little boy that's hanging on her leg. Is this like the Chicago Bears logo? Gosh, I don't follow sports. I don't know. Yeah, let's investigate the back. Well, I mean, they did a lot of detail work on this lady. They put this necklace on her, earrings, carved hair into it. Sounds hollow, but it's it's not resin. It doesn't, well, maybe it's just like chicken wire and plaster. Okay, everyone, it's wild theory time. I mean, the most obvious theory to me, or the most obvious explanation is these they either lived in this area. It's kind of like the Owens Valley, I think. I think we're near the Owens River. So maybe they lived in the Owens Valley before it got all sucked dry and messed up. Uh, mm -mm. Or maybe they were just... I don't know how long ago they lived. It's hard to tell. She looks real old timey. They look pretty old timey. So to me, they look like they lived in the... At the very latest, 1940s. So maybe they were just some old time pioneers here and their descendants... <sighs> came out here and put up a statue of him. I don't know why. I mean, was there a cabin right here? I mean, that first statue we saw, that was, to me, pretty obviously like a, a hiker or some guy who liked coming out here. And somebody came out and erected that. I mean, I don't mean to be disparaging, but it was slightly creepy. Like, it had that pointy spire, like kind of witchy. This doesn't look creepy. I mean, it just looks like it belongs in a cemetery or something. So I'm just going to go ahead and guess that it was some old timers from this area Either that or just some old timers who always came camping out here in the summers, outdoors. People loved it here. And when they died, their kids or their grandkids put up statues to remember them. And maybe so they could, for all eternity, stare out at this beautiful forest, which they presumably once loved. I don't know, man. What do you think? And it's weird, too, how, like, they're right down that little trail from that other statue. So they're clearly linked in some way. What a mystery. Okay, well, that is statues, plural. That right there is too. So uh, I guess there's no sense in poking around here anymore. I mean, the trail leads one to the other and nowhere else. I mean, it's interesting. There's not even like a trodden path coming down from the road to this. It's, it kind of seems like no one's been here in a while. I mean, that one thing said 2019 on it. That's two years. And it does snow here every winter, so... I guess the path could have just gotten covered up. Uh, but apparently people do come out here because, okay, I'm about to show you my number one least favorite type of litter. It's so disgusting. These friggin' dental floss picks. Blah, you know what I mean? Like, is it really, first of all, is it really that hard to floss with just regular floss? It's not, newsflash. I used to never floss. Oh, it's so hard, it takes so much time. No, it doesn't. It literally takes maybe 45 seconds to thoroughly floss and I'm a Virgo I floss very thoroughly your whole mouth so I don't know why people need these dumb plastic things that end up everywhere including way out here in the middle of nowhere but I'm gonna have to thank this particular gross floss pick because it led me to another surprise I'm not kidding man I saw that gross dental floss pick and I bent down to take a look at it and I happened to notice right next to it look at this there's like an old cookie tin hidden in the stump of this tree <laughs> I swear I'm not making any of this up man I did not expect this to be here I just saw that floss pick and came over to complain about it all right well this has to be connected to the statues because it's real close to them oh my god there's probably like 10 snakes down there Ooh, sorry snakes 
All right, what do you suppose could be in this tin? Oh man, I think my mom maybe even had this exact same tin. It's like from butter cookies or something. Let's see. Okay, well, uh -huh. June, or July 27th, 2019. Okay, that seems like the last time anyone was ever out here. It's another from the same day, like little coasters. Oh, it's a geocache, official geocache. Oh, I found a geocache. Let's see what's in it. Well, there's some obsidian, which is laying on the ground all over the place. Star Wars pencil. Uh, a necklace. Here's a note on a little tiny chain. Let's see what it says. In honor of my great, great aunt, June June. P.S. I made the lip ring. Lip ring? Is this a lip ring? Oh, no, it's just a whole bunch of those little hooks that go on the end of a necklace. Uh, making a necklace of its own. Whoa, that's pretty meta. <laughs> Decorative keychain of some sort. Some pennies, a pull tab, a poker chip from the... I guess that's the Grand Sierra in Reno. Is that what that is? No, it says Anaheim Hills, Tustin Ranch, Dad Miller. What? Boy, howdy. I have no idea what that is. It looks like a poker chip. Oh, what's this? It's like a little, kind of like an arrowhead, but it's very light. It's made out of some wood or something. Wouldn't, wouldn't kill anything. All right. Well, let's see what's in this little baggie. All right, well, we got a bunch of stuff in here. Picture of a dog, somebody's dog. We got a map that somebody says, we are here from Chicago. Okay, that's cool. I mean, I guess geocachers come from miles around to find this stuff. What's this? <laughs> a drawing of two faces looking at each other. Okay. Here's some, I guess, kind of like a log book that you sign when you find the geocache on this stationery belonging to Lisa Lane, the top sales agent for... Mm, I don't know where. It doesn't say where. <laughs> but there's her number, 951. Not sure what area code that is. Okay, well, anyways, the chicken man, official geocache, set here by S. Vaughn and Houseman Hunters on June 19th, 2013. Oh, wow, a while ago. So then everybody else who stopped by signs it. Dear man in the woods family, we are so glad your dog found our geocache. We have been coming for years and have been fascinated by Chicken Man. Oh, okay, so I guess the people who created this geocache were also fascinated by that, that statue. Maybe that statue's been here a long time then. Maybe these geocachers are the one who left the 2019 stuff and no telling how long the statues have been here. Okay, so anyways, they, we have long been fascinated by Chicken Man. It's so wonderful to know his story. And June is beautiful. Okay, so maybe the woman's name was June. What's his story? Thank you for sharing your family with us. We aren't actually Lisa. It was the only paper we had, LOL. Oh, so this is just some realtor. I got to look up 951 area code now. Oh, okay, well, here's another note in here. That, Hi, Lisa. The chicken man is my dad. I made him as a tribute. This year, I placed my mom. They were wonderful people, and they had four children who loved them. My late brother's tribute is 100 feet to the north. Our dog, Toby, found your geocache. Much love, Ron. July 22nd, 2017. Okay, so this guy, Ron, made these sculptures of his mom and dad. Wow, I would never have known what they were if I hadn't found this geocache. That's cool. And I didn't even have a dog to find it. Oh, and then here's another note from another guy. That was Ron. Here's Tom. Lisa, the chicken man, or the man in the woods, as we call him, is my wife's dad. The son's dog found the cache. We've been coming here for years to enjoy this tribute. All right. That's it. That's all the info in here, but... Wow, it's so rare to like stumble on something really bizarre in the forest and then actually find the answer to what it was. And the fact that it's on some random realtor's notepad is extra funny. Hey, everybody call her and tell her thank you. Gosh, now I wonder if this is the dog that found the geocache. Uh, or if this could just be, maybe it's the dog that belonged to Chicken Man and June. Huh. Okay, well, there's one more paper in here that I didn't open yet. Let's see what this is. Bishop Creek Canyon. Discover the undiscovered. It's like a fishing map. There's a lot of trout fishing in this area. Huh, okay. Okay, so I wrote a note, a long note, <laughs> to leave in here that basically just says, I have a YouTube channel where I explore weird stuff. One of my viewers tipped me off, came out here to check them out, found the geocache by mistake because I bent down to pick up that litter. Blah, blah, blah. Thanks for the beautiful monument. So... Just wanted to let them know how much enjoyment they gave me. I appreciate the, not only the sculptures, but also this geocache. I would never know the backstory without it. You know what I mean? And for that matter, I guess I should thank whoever littered this gross dental floss pick too for, you know, leading me to the geocache. 
Uh, and now I can't decide if I should leave that pick here so that it tips off the next person or if I should pick it up and throw it away. Well, you know, I just went ahead and left it there because it might actually lead somebody to this little tin, which if you weren't looking for it, you'd probably never see because the uh, chicken man statue is right there. And then there's kind of this tree and this stump totally blocking it. You'd never see it from the chicken man side. You'd have to come all the way around here, which you wouldn't do unless you saw that piece of litter laying there catching the sun, which I guess I should put it back out here where I found it. Wow, far out. <laughs> this was <laughs> totally worth coming out here to check out. Eh, 40 miles out of your way, that ain't nothing. Well, I mean, well, it's not nothing. Gas prices being what they are. Matter of fact, I paid, oh gosh, I think I paid, was that 5.69 a gallon in uh, Levining? Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, so it wasn't nothing, but I guess it was worth it. It was to me, now I know the cool story of Chicken Man, and June. Sounds like a country western song. If anyone out there writes country music, well, you ought to think about writing a song called Chicken Man and June. Chicken Man and June. Out here in the forest, they were gone too soon. Or something like that. <laughs> and then let's not forget Glenn and his crazy little magic mushroom smurf monument. That was pretty cool too. All in all, I'd say this has been a great day. A long day, but a great day. Started out at the hot spring, then I went in and had that delicious shake, found some strange statues, and well, now it's about time to start thinking about finding a place to camp. But that's nothing you have to worry about. I'll just see you on the next adventure, and you never know where it'll take us. He was a chicken man, her name was June. The very first time he saw her, he thought she hung the moon. A buck, 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 buck. They call him the chicken man, she's his little June. He eats from a silver spork, and she's got a silver spoon. Out here in the forest, underneath the moon, Ain't no one around but Chicken Man and June. They call him the Chicken Man. And she's his sweet June. He'll do anything he can. Just to keep it in tune.